welcome you to Kenton, home of the regional champs from a season ago here on this Kenton Moose Lodge fam Family Center preview. Andy Lynch joined by Devin McGrath to my right and Jared Ramsey on the end. Two of the seniors on the defensive side of the football. Devin, let's start with you. A couple days in the camp, you said it's been a little breezy, nice yeah. conditions, no rain. Been nice so far, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Tell us uh, what camp's like in Kenton the first few weeks before you get that first scrimmage in. In camp in Kenton the first few weeks, um, it's long. <laughs> <laughs> you get, they, work, they work us pretty hard to, to get us ready for the upcoming scrimmages and ultimately the first game. Do you ever think about, you guys have been to the regional championship, the state semis the last two years, where it's cold, it's snowy sometimes in those postseason games. Do you ever think about during these hot August days, we're going to be playing in the snow in three months. Does that pass through your mind at all? Mm, sometimes it passes through my mind, but ultimately I like to think about what's going on in the moment. That's probably a good, good answer with Coach Stan right over there. Jerry <laughs> Ramsey down at the end. How's the defense looking? You guys graduated a bunch of very talented players, a, a defense that was one of the best in the area. Uh, how's it coming in the replacement effort? Well, we're coming, coming together rather well. I mean, we're working. We're working on our fundamentals and just hitting every day hard and really just pushing ourselves and seeing where our limits are and we want to get past them and get better. Year in and year out, Kenton's always got a good, strong senior class, guys that are going to go to the next level uh, in college football. So many are playing college football right now uh, in, in the teens. What have you learned from some of those past classes as you become seniors? I learned uh, what it really takes to be a leader. You got to really step up and you got to show them what you got and you can't give up. Even if you make a silly mistake and you look dumb, you just give 100% and you always, always, always keep going. Got to have a short memory. Get right back out there. Devin, what about yeah. you? Um, Any particular guys stick out that it taught you or mentored you? Travis and Trevor mm -hmm. were always two to, they always, they always helped me out and gave me pointers when I was doing something wrong and they were a big help last year. I learned a lot from them. Did you see yourself becoming a, a Trevor or Travis Downing? I'm, I'm hoping I can, I'm hoping I can get up to that level. I certainly contributed a lot for this Kenton football team a season ago. Uh, they got off to a bad start, frankly, 0-2. That, that weird Wapak game where you had to come back on Saturday yeah, and, yeah. and finish it off down to the wire. But week three, you know, on, you guys were, were tough. You, you never lost until the reg uh, state semifinal. What was it about that middle stretch that, that made you guys so strong, Devin? Um, I think we really, we really just pulled together as a team. We realized that after those two games, we really needed to we needed to step up our game. We started practicing a lot harder, and we started playing to playing together as a team more and more as the weeks went on. There's some urgency because we're not gonna make the playoffs if we lose again. Yeah, <laughs> Kenton will try and make the playoffs once again this year. Go for yet another winning record, and we will talk with two more of the Wildcats still to come. Also, Patrick Campbell sits down with Coach Fackler. It is the Kenton Moose Family Center warm-up show. In Kenton. Second quarter here from Kenton on the Kenton Moose Family Center warm-up show. Andy Lynch joined by two more of the senior captains, Trey Reicheldurfer, senior wide receiver, and Aaron Tillman down at the end, a senior defensive line. Trey uh, stepping into some big footsteps. So many great wide receivers over the years. Max Morrison here in Kenton today uh, just around the team. What have you learned from some of those guys running routes and just confidence-wise? Um, just routes and how you have to position yourself on your defenders and confidence. How's the things going right now for the offense? Um, looking pretty good. Obviously, having Trent Heights come back, 264 yards a game, and uh, regular season play, all those touchdowns, uh, got to bring some confidence to the team having the signal caller back. Yeah, it helps with him being back, and it just keeps everybody on the same page. Aaron Tillman, senior defensive lineman, uh, only senior or only D lineman <laughs> back from that great Kenton defense last year. How's it feel stepping into that leadership role? Uh, it, it, feel, it feels good that I was able to come back, and we had a great year last year, and that, that really helped me grow like as a player and as a person. What did it feel like to, to be around those guys, and how did they help you grow? It, it made me have to grow up real quick to get on the same page as them and be a team player. You know, we talked with the other guys about the adversity the first two weeks of the season last year, starting 0-2, need to win out to get in the playoffs, and you did just that. Does that help going into this year? You know, a little adversity losing all those seniors that you know you guys can do it? Yeah, that, that, that is a great confidence boost. That we, we've done it before, and if we, we, it shows we can come back from anything. No question about it. Trey, do you have a favorite WBL foe you get to play, or, or is it just whoever's on the schedule next? Yeah, it's whoever. 
It's a pretty good answer. Coach is happy with that. How about you? Uh, there's a few rivalries, but like he said, it's whoever we have to play. It doesn't matter who they are. We, we had to come out and play. Tell us about the defense. What, 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 what are we going to expect from Kenton this year? Well, the whole team, the whole defense is looking great. I, I really like how we're going. I think we, we had last year with so many seniors. We had so many guys that could have played, but the seniors were the great seniors were above them. So now they actually have a chance to play. I, I expect great things. So you feel like a lot of the guys are hungry because they, yeah. they had the opportunity, but they really didn't because mm -hmm. of those seniors. Yes. Coaching staff is so veteran here at Kenton. Uh, just how much do you guys really, you know, look look to learn from those guys? We, we, we try to be sponges and soak up as much as we can because the more more we learn, the better we're going to be. I saw DJ Burris over there punting. Is he uh, kind of the scout team punter for you guys? Yeah, he boots it. <laughs> he sure does. I was a little surprised. I don't remember from his high school days. But uh, looking forward to the opener. Uh, always a good one at Coldwater. Trey, what do you remember about just the atmosphere of that game over the past few years? It's crazy. There's a lot of people there, and it's really exciting. That will be a road game on WTLW for you that first week. And then the – Home opener against Defiance in Western Buckeye League play before week number three, the big game at Kenton, or at Wapak. We're in Kenton, aren't we? At Wapak. And we'll have that one for you as well. But when we return, Patrick sits down with the head coach. You're on the Kenton Moose Lodge Family Show Preview. You're on WS. Welcome back into the warm-up show presented by the Kenton Moose talking Kenton Wildcats football. Join me right now, head coach Brent Fackler. And coach, uh, let's wind the clock back just a little bit. We've we've heard about kind of how the team responded. Um, 11 wins in a row last season, a, a terrific season overall. Take us back into that week after you lost the Wapak game. You guys are 0-2, unfamiliar territory for Kenton. What did you guys do to kind of get back on the winning track? Well, first of all, Patrick, I think what we did was uh, we, we didn't flinch. We weren't worried that, oh, my gosh, you know, this is this is happening to us. Uh, you know, we, what we did know is we had some experienced players, but we had a lot of guys that had never been on the field before for the first time. We did play a lot of seniors last year, but, you know, about 10 or 11 of those guys had never been on the field before, and they were just working into that, and it took them a little time. But we were also playing good opponents. Mm -hmm. And you, you talk about Coldwater that won the state. You talk about Wapak that went, you know, against Trotwood Madison in overtime and, you know, possibly could have won that game. And uh, so we knew we had good opponents we were playing. So we really didn't flinch and think, oh, you know, guys, we've got to change something. We just kept doing it and we kept going hard. And the kids knew that, uh, you know, in order to be where we wanted to be, they were going to have to give their maximum effort and just continue to do well. And, uh, you know, as things played out, those kids did come through for us. And, uh, you know, and we were very grateful to get where we were and thought maybe we should have got even a little bit better last year. With some of those kids kind of getting into those roles and there were a lot of younger players in your team last year, uh, how did it look to see those kids really mature and develop into the players that they end up becoming starting from the first game uh, against Coldwater and then to the very end of the season? Well, it was awesome just because, you know, you, you think of a football program, a true program, I guess the greatest program in the world would have just seniors starting. And every year you'd have seniors just coming in and starting. And the biggest thing I, I think our kids have learned inside too is, you know, it doesn't matter who gets the credit. You know, if, if I'm doing this or I'm doing that, I think they know that uh, – you know, nothing's going to get accomplished if we worry about who's getting the credit. And they kind of grew up there. We got some guys that started getting some experience, and they became guys that you look at now and you say, man, they had these seniors that were this good and that good. Well, you know, some of those guys didn't start out as, as players. They, they were first-year starters last year, and they really came through for us. And I think it has a lot to do with our tradition, our program, uh, of course the coaching and the upbringing of the, of the student and child as well. The tradition of Kenton and really the, the stability of the coaching staff, because you've been around for, for quite a while. This is your second year as head coach, but you've been in the program for a while. Does the stability really help with getting the kids prepared and ready to go and just ready to play football when the season starts? Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, they know that we're going to be here and we're going to be here, you know, nonstop, uh, even in the off season. 
you know, we're, we're going to be here and they know that when we have winter weightlifting or spring weightlifting, there's going to be six or seven or eight coaches here. Uh, they know it's a family atmosphere and that's what, you know, they come back to the family and, uh, you know, they're taken care of and loved at home, and we try to do the same thing here, love them, take care of them, and I think they reciprocate and give you their best effort at all times when they know that uh, you love them, and uh, they try to reciprocate and do as many things for the family unit as they can. One of the staples of the Kenton attack over the years has been the passing game, and you guys uh, lost four wide receivers to graduation last year. That's a lot of yards going away and new guys for Trent Heist try to find the, to throw the ball to. Uh, how, what is that going to look like? Are we going to see any differences in, in the Kenton passing attack or is it kind of reload and rebuild? You know, we're going to be exactly the same as we've been uh, for years. Uh, what we're going to do, if you looked at last year, we really had two main receivers coming back, uh, the Collins, Stoller, and Blackford. And uh, then we had two guys that also played in uh, Connor Jones and uh, and uh, Logan, Luke Nick, uh, Luke uh, Luke Jackson, and uh, you know Luke and and Connor had played a lot, and so we had four guys there that were pretty experienced. But we had two or three other guys that came in and had to do a lot too, because when you're running the five wide, every one of those receivers have to be able to go to, and so we had some guys that got some got some work, uh, and I think that uh, we're going to be doing the same things. We're going to have different faces. They're going to be a little bit younger. Uh, you know, and there, you, you know, we're not going to have a whole bunch of seniors out there. I mean, they're going to be juniors, and a lot of sophomores are going to be playing. And you know, when they, when you say that, you're looking at guys that maybe aren't as big and strong as some of the guys they're competing against. But that's what gives us an advantage in this offense is being, you know, being a machine out there, trying to be a machine and do the things you need to do. You know, you also had an outstanding defense last year, and you lost nine defensive starters to graduation. So what does the defense look like, and what changes and adjustments will you have to make and holes to fill on that side of the ball? Well, defensively, we lost a lot, too. Uh, you know, we lost almost everybody in the secondary. We lost uh, all of our linebackers. Uh, we lost, you know, all but really two of our defensive linemen. And... Uh, you know, we're going to have to fill all those holes, but like I think it was Aaron said before, you know, there's guys that are coming and were waiting in the wings last year, you know, chomping at the bit, and they're ready to go this year. Uh, they're a little bit stronger. They're a little bit faster. They're more mature this year. Uh, they're ready to play on Friday nights, and they just need that experience getting out there, getting in these scrimmages, seeing what's, what's you know, what's going on. And I think that we have uh, – uh, great ability. I know last year's defense was helped because, you know, we didn't onside kick a lot. We didn't put our defense in a bad situation a lot. We we tried to make sure we needed to punt when we needed to punt just because, you know, more of our experienced guys were on on defense, so we thought we'd uh, play to that. So, you know, we were a little bit more conservative, even though we threw the ball, you know, 90% of the time, we were still conservative with doing it. And we never tried to put our defense in a bad situation. And that helped our defense out and helped our team out. Getting into practice is still fairly early in the process of getting ready for the season. But have you seen anything that's uh, surprised you, jumped out of you, anything that's really caught your attention from your kids so far? You know, that's a good question. Not really yet. I know we haven't started hitting, and a lot of times you'll see that uh, on the first day of hitting or, you know, after hitting or after the first scrimmage. That's when you'll really see that aha surprise moment or this person's really surprised me. You know, they've worked in the weight room. They've done the spring lifting stuff. They've done summer. And now all of a sudden you put on the pads, and that's where you really see it. So, so right now, no, a lot of the guys are doing a lot of the things I expect them to do. You know, a lot of them, yeah, they've got a lot better. Uh, but I haven't seen uh, that aha, you know, this guy is really surprising me. You never like to overlook any opponents or take one game as more important than the other. But week one, again, you'll be playing a defending state champion. Does that ramp up the intensity of, of your practice and your preparation, and your team's prep uh, leading up to that game? Well, I think so. Whoever we play next is our most important opponent. And when you think about it, We've been uh, how many months since uh, December? You know, we've been thinking about playing Coldwater. That's our first game. So there is a emphasis there just because it is our first game and it's what everybody's been thinking about. 
you know so so yeah it's it's an added thing we love playing cold water i think they love playing us we love the atmosphere that the two teams generate together uh we have respect for their players their coaches i think uh, they respect us and our coaches as well it, it's a great uh you know, it's a great game between two great programs in Northwest Ohio and for the state for that matter. We'll definitely look forward to having that game on the Family and Networks. Head coach Brent Fackler of Kenton. Coach, thanks for joining us. That's going to wrap it up for the Kenton Moose Lodge warm-up show. I want to thank Andy Lynch and Joe Vernick for helping us out. I'm Patrick Kamler, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>